Okay, so today's big idea is uh, we're going to continue social networking, social networks for your business, and today's idea will be Google Plus. Uh, so this is Google's social network. There are many social networks out there. Last week we covered Twitter. Next time we'll cover Facebook. We'll cover Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, lots of networks. And the reason I do an overview of a variety of networks is because this is about finding your audience. So find the right audience in the right network. We'll get hands-on, of course, in a little while. We'll log in and we'll see how Google Plus works and why it might be useful. But the big idea of doing a survey of a variety of networks is finding the right audience. Um, you might see that your customers or your target audience is best found on Pinterest. So you might want to direct all your efforts to Pinterest. Or you might find that um, Facebook is the best network for your audience. Well, you don't quite know this unless you do a little bit of the effort of using the networks. You'll find plenty of articles out there that tell you uh, make sure your business is on Facebook and that you're posting every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Well, that might be beneficial for some net for some companies or some audiences and such, and maybe not others. My audience doesn't get out of bed until noon. So, uh, and they're on Instagram. So, uh, I'm, I'm wasting my time or spending my time on the wrong network, perhaps. So, today we'll be covering Google Plus uh, because this is another way, another way where you can reach your audience. So, last time, check the notes from last time because there's a lot to look in there. But as I said, all networks share many commonalities. Commonalities. And you can look at the document from last week to refresh your memory on that. But Google Plus will be another one where uh, we're going to do the effort of creating a profile to uh, market yourself or your business, and then creating content to reach your audience. And then checking stats to further your strategy. So the big difference about how we might use social networks as a business as opposed to a person is that we need to check stats. We need to check the data, the insights or analytics, whatever the network may call it. Uh, some call it your insights, others your analytics or your stats or whatever, your data. As a business, we are checking our data to see what is working, what isn't, and therefore we shape our strategy of how we use the network based on the data that we get. Last time we talked about that we get likes, we get replies, we get comments, you know, we get, we get feedback for our efforts. But as a business, you get even more, uh, even more d data and stats. You know, effective posting time of the day or, or great time of the week where, where your content was, was most liked. So based on our data, that's what will tell us, yes, it is prudent for me to be posting at 8 in the morning on Mondays on Facebook. Or no, actually, I should be posting every Wednesday on Instagram uh, after a certain TV show. I don't know. So uh, based on the data that we get out of the network, that then guides what we need to do. Based on data we collect from our usage of the networks, we then devise a strategy to use the network or networks. As we get an overview of the class, we might figure out what is um, the one or the two or the five networks that might be useful for us to reach the right audience. And um, people always ask, do I need to be on all of these networks? Do I, do I need to post on all of them? Uh, uh, no, but you don't know what's the right one to post to unless you're active a little bit to figure out your audience. 
once you check your data, you check your traffic, you check your stats, then that helps you figure out which network, which one, or maybe two networks or so to focus on. Because I could easily say, yeah, you've got to be on Facebook. Everyone's on Facebook. But that's a double-edged sword, Facebook, and we'll see why next time we talk about Facebook. Um, yes? Do you refer to stats on all of these networks and all the social media? Stats? Yeah, on all of them. Yes. Well, like I said, all of them might have a different name. There might be insights on one, analytics on the other. They're all stats. Okay. But yeah, you want to check your stats. You want to check your data on each network because each network only gives you the data of its own network. It doesn't tell you, you know, Instagram's not going to tell you how great you're doing on Pinterest. And Pinterest is not going to tell you your data on Facebook. So yeah, you, you, would, you would check your data on each of the networks. So... Um, we will we will see these things. Uh, last week I mentioned uh, we didn't get to do it in class, but just as a quick reminder uh, for Twitter. Remember we had the site uh, analytics.twitter.com. You use Twitter in the regular old login screen, twitter.com, but then you've got this screen of analytics. Uh, we're going to see variations of this in the, the different networks that we work with. Um, like Google Plus today. But you want to check your, your data, your stats to see how well your it's working, uh, this kind of picture, this kind of content. Now I haven't focused exactly on the exact content to create yet. Uh, again, we're, we're building to that. And then also keep in mind that just like that article says, make sure you post every day on Monday at 8 in the morning. Well that might apply for certain companies and certain products. And so for me to teach, make sure you create this kind of content every week doesn't apply to everyone. Uh, for some people, you, you need to do text content. For some people, video content. For others, picture content. So uh, I haven't gotten just yet to say, make sure that you create a post exactly like this. Uh, I haven't gotten to that because this is going to vary for everyone. So we're going to go to plus.google.com to set up an account in just a moment. Um, Google Plus, as I said, is Google's social network. Google Plus is Google's answer to Facebook. Facebook has been rising and rising and increasing in usage. Facebook's been around since 2004, so uh, next year is going to be 15 years that Facebook is out there. And it has reached about 2.1 billion users. Not million, billion. Two billion people are using Facebook. Uh, so Google and Facebook fight for the number one and the number two most visited site in the world. Um, Google often gets the number one most visited site from a Google search. You know, plain old google.com, when you search for stuff, that often is the number one most visited site in the world. But the point of something of google.com, the Google search, is that you, know, you, you search for something, you're looking for a restaurant or something, you find the result and then you move on. The big purpose of Google.com is to find something, and once you've found it, okay, you move on, you go to that website. Facebook, if you think about what you do on Facebook, on Facebook you log in, you chat with your friends and family, you look at people's pictures, you comment on their vacation photos and whatever. You're active on Facebook a lot longer than you are on Google. On Google, you do a Google search, you get your result, you move on, you're elsewhere. On Facebook, you could spend minutes or hours on Facebook, you can spend a lot of time on Facebook doing what you, what it you know is designed for you to do. Whereas for Google, you're done with it. So Google Plus is Google's answer to Facebook because it's a social network like Facebook. So uh, people spend a lot more time on Facebook than Google.com because there is more to do there. So, Google invented their own social network to 
try to capture people's attention and time just like Facebook. And they've integrated Google Plus profiles into other aspects of Google. So Google Plus is the company Google's social network. Technically, uh, a lot of people don't quite know unless you follow like finances and tech and stuff. Uh, but the company Google used to be the name of the company. Google then changed their name a few years ago. Does anyone know what, ha what the official Google company name now is? Alphabet. So um, Alphabet is the parent company of everything that is Google. And everyone still calls it Google, and even you know, three years later or whatever it's been that they've changed their name, everyone still says Google parent company Alphabet because it hasn't stuck. Uh, no one remembers that Alphabet is the parent company, so it's interchangeable. You only you only care if you're interested in in like investing in the company and such. But the Google company, A.K.A. Alphabet, the Google company has its hands in a lot of things. Google Search, for example. So we'll say here, Google or Alphabet properties. They own this stuff. Google.com. What do you do in Google.com? Search. In Google.com, you search for stuff. Search the web for stuff. Google also owns Google Maps. What do you use Google Maps for? Directions to locations. Google also uh, owns Android. What's Android? Your phone. Technically, the operating system on your phone, if you have an Android phone like Samsung or Motorola, etc. If you've got an iPhone, who owns you there? Apple. Who owns your smartphone? So Apple owns your smartphone uh, if you're on an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, Google uh, owns your smartphone if you're on a Samsung or a, or a Motorola or an LG or, or whatever, whatever else. So the Google company owns that operating system that controls your phone. And they've got Google Plus, which is social network. They've also got this other little thing called Google Mail, also known as Gmail. And that's your email. So Google has their hands in a lot of these properties uh, for different purposes. And yes. When I last week you mentioned uh, business.google.com, and when I come up with that, it's Google My Business. Mm -hmm. what, what is that? Well, it's what we're going to talk about today. It's using Google for business purposes, uh, and one of those purposes will be a Google Plus account. So Google has their hand in all of this, which you might not have realized. Uh, but these big companies, they, they have a lot of reach. You know, if you talk about Apple, well. They're very famous for their iPhones, their iPads, iTunes. Um, you know, Microsoft. They're they're using Windows. If you run a, if you run most computers, you're probably running a Windows computer. They've got their uh, their reach there. So these big companies have a lot of reach here. And for a long time, uh, Google didn't have this item here of a social network. So again, uh, Google saw a lot of people are spending time on Facebook. A lot of people are uploading their, uh, their photos, uh, writing about what they had for lunch. A lot of people are using this social network. So we need to create our own social network because we need people uh, to be on our properties because all of these companies are in competition with each other. So they integrated Google+. Plus. You get a brand new Android device. When you set it up, it asks you to create an account. That account is a Google Plus. 
when you set up Gmail, it's integrated with your contacts and such, and that's Google+. Plus. Um, if you've got a business and you want to appear on a map, well, that's Google+. Plus. When, when you do searching, they claim that they, uh, Google claims that you get like unbiased results, but if they've got their hands in all of these other properties, doesn't it stand to reason that they might also be skewing results on their social network? I mean, on their search engine to their social network? You know, this is still a, this is still a company. This is still a company that's trying to earn profits and such. Google.com, you know, is, is not a right. It, it's a website that people created for a purpose and then ultimately they want to profit off of just like any company would so it would make sense that they would kind of integrate all of these systems um, obviously or not obviously altruistically or not so us as a business it would make sense to get our business on the official Google network where it might then help our business be found when people search so ultimately, it's a good idea to get on the official social network of the biggest website in the world. So our business has the most potential reach. Like I said, they say that they're unbiased, and if someone does a search, and my business is on Facebook, they say that, yeah, your business from Facebook will appear on our search results. But several times in class, and I know this is a biased search and all of that, but in classes, when I've taught this, I've taught this, these classes for years, a lot of times we get different results depending how we search, because the search engine, Google, you know, their trade secrets uh, is how do these results appear? And we've gotten results in classes where people have searched and uh, their business is like maybe one spot higher on the Google Plus than the Facebook. Even though they've had their Facebook for a year and they've set up their Google Plus two months ago. And it's not always like that. It varies all the time, and there's lots of reasons why we get certain search results. But it would stand to reason that if you're using a certain company's search, and you've also listed yourself in that certain company's network, it might give you a leg up uh, on the competition, where Facebook is a direct competitor to Google. So that's the big idea of why we, we cover Google+. Quick show of hands, how many of you have ever heard of Google+, Plus before today? Uh, not as many people as I would think. How many of you have used Google Plus before today? Very few people. So this is the reason why I cover it uh, before Facebook. We'll cover Facebook, of course, we'll cover them all. But I want to cover Google Plus because it's another social network where you create a profile, where you create uh, content, where you put links and all of that stuff like any social network. But I want to cover it for the idea of that uh, it would be beneficial for you to create one of these free accounts to help your business to get found on Google search the biggest search engine in the world and um, that's what we're going to do in just a moment so does that make sense questions so far yeah the reason why I've never used Google Plus is because I don't really know they, they do, like Instagram seems, you know, very, or Snapchat or Pinterest, like you get what it is. Google Plus is kind of vague in what it is and what it does. And so that's what you're going to cover. Today. Exactly. We're going to cover all those details. But in short, it's a social network. It does exactly what Instagram does, which is share photos. It does exactly what Facebook does, which is connect with friends and family. Does exactly what Pinterest does, which is connect or co make a collection of certain photos on a certain topic. So it does exactly what every other network does, and that's what every network is going toward nowadays. Like they all do exactly the same thing. They have their own interface and they have their own culture and they have their own like little nuances, but they're all getting homogenized. They're all about sharing a photo, giving a like, chatting what's new today. So um, for people, for businesses, there are different nuances that we will see as we get into it. 
Uh, and so, uh, yeah, if we haven't used Google Plus before, or if it seems different or, or odd or vague and such, you know, we'll use it today and we'll see its similarities and its positives and negatives and how it may be valuable for your business. Google Plus ended up on my Android machine. I was like, I don't trust you. Mm -hmm. And then the other day, I just took a picture of, around the complex of my rental, and it decided to reconfigure my my picture into a black and white artistic one. I'm like, what are you doing with my stuff? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want them doing that. This was a question that was asked in detail last week as well about that all of these networks suddenly seem to be very intrusive. Now, it's not, it's not Google Plus that, that does that as well. They all do that. And the answer last week was don't use them. Now, it is a very harsh answer to give, but they're all like that. And they're all to various degrees too intrusive, too annoying. I don't like this. Change, why did you change my timeline? I was so used to the interface. Now it's this. All of these networks are like this. And all of them uh, can be annoying to various degrees. And all of them, the only real answer is don't use them. Now our problem of course is, well if I don't use Facebook for example, that's got the biggest reach for everyone, so suddenly I've cut myself off from reaching a lot of people. As I've been saying about Google, it's integrated with all of these other systems and yes it's annoying that it changed my photo, leave my photo alone. But all of the networks to various degrees are very intrusive and annoying and they change and for all of these. Uh, I am seeing a backlash now in general about the whole culture of social networking, at, especially after the election and after the Senate hearings and all of the stuff that these companies are admitting that maybe our services were hacked and uh, there, there's fake news and all of that. Yes, there, I am seeing more and more of a backlash about this is annoying, it's too intrusive, etc., etc., but this is the double-edged sword of social networking at the moment. And the only thing to say is if, if we don't like how it works, don't don't use it. But do you have the option of using Gmail and not Google Plus? Um, not really. No, <laughs> it's all connected. Um, you know, their big idea was, well, everyone loves Gmail. They're, they're going to love Google Plus because it's even more of stuff you can do. And, you know, Facebook, uh, people loved the wall on Facebook and the Messenger, so now let's change that into its own app. Oh, and it... And, the, the Messenger app has its own uh, set of um, terms of service that no one reads that uh, help, who knows how intrusive that is. So uh, it's all so integrated together that it's just hard to pull it apart. And the only way these things are going to improve or change is if you know we the people tell them we don't like this, don't use my data like this, maybe legislation will help. But you know these are global companies so uh, it's, there's no easy answer nowadays. Last week I said this is still the Wild West. Even though it's almost 15 years that Facebook is out, they, they're still barely figuring out some of these things about maybe, maybe it's not so cool that it's constantly telling everyone where I'm at and things like that. Another question? Does Google Plus strip out the metadata on photos that Facebook does? Um, it uh, the that data like the location and in information and such uh, is always there even on Facebook but you just have to set it so that it doesn't display it to anyone so the default we have to check what the default is but the default may be that yes by default it'll have that metadata but there's the option to turn it off so that people can't see it besides yourself I've always been told that Facebook actually strips that metadata out. So if somebody right click takes my picture, I've got no way to prove it's my picture because the serial number on the camera's gone and all of that embedded a copyright that's embedded in the metadata. I'm just curious if Google's doing the same thing. We'll have to check. Um, I don't uh Honestly, I don't quite believe that Facebook does that, you know, even if your photographer friends have told you that. Simply, again, because it's too valuable for all of these networks to know as much about you as possible. Because from the consumer side, like we talked previously, these are so intrusive. But from the business side, this is amazing, and I love it. Because in the real world, marketing, it's hard for a real company to reach an audience in the real world because... I don't know where that client is, where that customer is, where are they in the real world, how can I reach the right audience. In the digital world, we give away so much information, willingly or unwillingly, that for uh, marketers, this is a treasure trove to find the right audience. 
and there is that whole two sides of this coin that we have to deal with about how intrusive it is for people, but how great and vast it is for a business. So I have to double check that Facebook is that altruistic. Honestly, for all of these networks, I'm very cynical about them. As a person, I'm very cynical about all of these networks, about how intrusive they are. But as a business, I love these networks because they let me reach the right audience a lot better than ever before. Mm -hmm. Cheaper. Mm -hmm. So um, if you choose to in class, we're going to set up an account here. As we did last week, uh, you can make this up completely fake just to learn how the system works and then delete it. Uh, or if you do uh, decide to, to use it and keep it, here's another avenue to reach an audience. So I'm going to make up a completely new business just to learn how this works. And then if I decide to keep it, then I'll keep it. If not, I can delete it easily. So go ahead and go to your web browser. And let's go to business.google.com. Any web browser? Yeah. Just for fun, I'm also going to use the official Google web browser, Google Chrome. So Google, again, they have their hands in everything. There's a web browser. There's an email. There's a map system. You know, Microsoft. Well, Microsoft's official web browser is Internet Explorer, or Edge. Microsoft has its own search engine, Bing.com. Microsoft has tried to create its own social networks that you've never heard of. So all of these companies have this reach that, yes, uh, on the one aspect, it is, it is very intrusive for people. But as we've said before, uh, for businesses and such, it could be very useful. Let's go to business.google.com. And as I said last week, the, um, what are, the accounts that we can create in class, you can create them or not. You can just take notes and follow along. Um, you can do it at home. You can do it here. Uh, these computers, when they get turned off, they reset. So all that, you, uh, all that your information that might have been on them will get erased because these computers have deep freeze. These computers have a software that will erase themselves back to factory settings. So. Uh, business.google.com I guess technically the address is google.com slash business but the point of this is it's gonna go on to talk about uh, you can create a business listing on Google um, where uh, you'll show photos uh, hours of operation um, you can do customer service and so forth. So Facebook has a version of this too, which we'll look at in Facebook when we get to that next time. But uh, this business page on Google is uh, to create a Google Plus account for, for our business. Uh, what I like about the Google business is that there is also a phone number to get in contact with them to help you set it up and to give you more, more advice on it. Are they, have you used that number? Are they usually available? I have, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll click Start Now on the top right. If you've already got a Gmail account, you can use it to create this account. But as I said, maybe just to learn this and to not put any real information yet, you could create a brand new account. And last week, I said um, that you could uh, try to set it up before class, but I would do it in class anyway, too. So let me write some notes here. A Google Plus account. Is tied to an email account. One email account can create multiple Google Plus accounts and several people can manage one account with their own credentials. So what that means is if I've got a business and uh, I'm going to use any of these social networks on a regular basis, 
Last week I mentioned that as a beginner, a regular basis is using it once a week. We'll see how exactly, of course, as time goes on. But I'm using these networks once a week. I'm being active once a week, at least. It would be helpful for more people in my business to also help me manage it, to help me upload a photo, answer customer questions, keep it active. So with Google Plus and Facebook and pretty much all of them, different people can log in to that one account to manage it. So what we can do here, I'm going to make this up. I'm, I'm going to try to set it up as a brand new, completely new account. Oh, let me also make a note. People always have this question. Uh, should I use a personal uh, email or a business email? And the, and the answer is either works. You decide what's best for you. What I mean about this is, let's say I've got victor at gmail.com, my personal email. But then I've got victorsbakery at gmail.com for my business, my fictional business, Victor's Bakery. Either of those will work to set up the Google Plus account. You just have to decide, well, any sort of notifications or correspondence you get from your business on Google Plus is going to get sent to that email. So if you set up your if you set it up with your personal email, you're going to get your emails at that personal email as opposed to your business email. So there's no wrong answer, but a lot of people choose to use the business one. And even if you use the personal one, even if you use a personal email, it will not show uh, who is behind the business account unless you choose that. So people are worried, if I use my personal victor at gmail, I don't want my name to be appearing when I'm doing this on my business, you know, Janet's Nails. Well, that will not appear unless you, you choose for that to happen. Whoever runs the account isn't automatically credited or shown who runs the account um, because the the networks, as I said, multiple people can run one account so it doesn't show who, who runs it unless it's specifically set. Yeah. 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 Exactly. If I've got multiple aspects of my business, I only need to set up one email address, and I can create a unique Google Plus accounts for each element that's set. Yeah, you could. Okay. You could. You could create different. Uh, you can create different uh, Google Plus accounts uh, exactly with one email. You can do that also in Facebook when we talk about Facebook. Setting up separate business pages in Facebook. It's like exactly like separate business pages. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go here to more options. I don't want to use an existing email account that I have, so under more options, I have here create account. So I will select to create an account. It's going to ask me for some information here. And then uh, I could use an existing email address. Let's say I've got Hotmail. So I could create an account and link it to my existing Hotmail account. And again, I'm going to make this up completely brand new as if it was a brand new person trying to set up a, a Google Plus account for my business. So this information that I would fill in here is going to be your real information. Uh, well, you know, fake for educational purposes. But normally this would be your real first name, last name. And then on subsequent screens is where we would set up the page for the business. So I'm just going to set this up. And as we saw last time when we were trying to do this in class, for some of us it worked and others it didn't, simply because a lot of people trying to create an account at the same time in the same building, sometimes these networks, they say, why are so many people at the exact same time trying to create an account? That seems fishy. So if it lets you do it, great. If not, we'll have to get around that. Yes. Mm -hmm.
on the birthday, uh, I believe you need to be at least 13 years old to use any of these networks. So just putting whatever right here shows that you're at least that age. There's a spot for a phone number, but you may be able to skip that for the moment. Uh, again, these networks have been around, most of them for at least a decade. And even in 10 years, they're still trying to figure things out. All of these networks came out for the purpose of originally people chatting with people, friends chatting with friends. Then the networks, the companies behind them thought, well, there might be a way to make money off of this. And uh, they thought, well, if we also set it up so that businesses can create accounts and maybe charge them or do different things, we might be able to make a little money. So then fraud came into the system where uh, you know these fraudulent companies try to create these accounts to try to reach an audience uh, and so they're trying to prevent some of that fraud as best as possible based on you know ad asking for phone numbers and such I'm gonna not put a phone number and see if it lets me go through if it if it doesn't let me I'll have to put in a number So here's the terms right here that are that are longer than this, but this is just the gist of it. And even this small one right here is the thing that no one reads, but everyone agrees to. And this happens for every single thing we do online nowadays, unfortunately. I, I think we're much personally editorializing. I think we're very complacent nowadays that these networks are so easy to use, but we don't read these things that it says, well, technically, we own your photos. That family photo that you went to Paris, we own it, and we can use it on our network to advertise. Now, that's uh, not true for every network. I don't know all the networks' terms of privacy, but that's how a lot of it is nowadays, and uh, things will not improve unless we agitate for improvement or not use them. Yes. Yeah, Google is part of uh, YouTube is part of Google as well. Yes. is what I said a moment ago that it may be because a lot of us are trying to create the account at the same time <clears throat> it, it thinks there might be some fraud going on uh, so I don't doubt that some of us will have trouble uh, setting this up and there's really not much I can do at the moment that's just Google being too strict or paranoid and uh, maybe if you try again in like 10 or 20 minutes it might let you go through So on mine, it is asking for a verification here. Um, I'm going to see if I can get past this. And again, this is always the hard part about teaching this. Obviously, I, uh, this class, uh, obviously, I want to show all of this hands-on and uh, exactly how to use all of these networks. But at a certain point, sometimes uh, there's difficulty in doing that because of their security and such. Yes? I got that same window. And I went below where it says verify, there's another choice that says whatever it says. I clicked on another choice instead of having it verify by mail. And then it gave me the option to do it later. And then I'm done. Okay. So I'm going to give this a shot here. Uh, let's see if it lets me verify via phone. Again, if, a, if this is like too much to do at the moment, just uh, you can do this later. Just take notes. You remember, you can rewatch the video and at another point set this up. Or you may figure out, well, it's not even valuable for me to use Google Plus at all. Like I said earlier, part of the reason to use the official Google network is because we've got the connection to all of these other Google properties. Data and, or my contacts, right? I remember to raise your hand, please. 
but yes, uh, the thing is that uh, that's like for a verification in case you get locked out of the account, then you can try to retrieve it with a different email address. You might be able to skip that to leave that blank. Uh, but a lot of the networks are like this nowadays that it's not just uh, one email. They, they ask for a second email to try to help you retrieve it in case in case you get locked out of it, in case something happens. Mm -hmm. Isn't that risky because if somebody hacks that one, your Gmail account, then they're obviously going to have access to all of your other emails, or am I... There is, um, there, there is always this, uh, this problem with all of this online security, yes. The more that they are connected, the more they could be vulnerable. So uh, this is again, this is like we keep, we're, we're going to keep coming back to an answer that no one's going to like. If, if you don't like what it has, don't use it. And unfortunately, that's what these networks are nowadays more and more and more that connect this, connect that. Why not share your contacts? Why not do this? Why not do that? And yeah, it does make us more, more vulnerable. So then we have to decide how much do we want to use them? How valuable are they for us? And if they're not, then we don't use them. And unless, you know, we the people, you know, tell them and say, I don't, why do you collect so much information? I don't like this, I don't like that. Maybe legislation, etc. Things are not going to improve. Yes? What if the phone number that I pick is uh, actually somebody's phone number? Because uh, I checked the text message, which does the screen said you get the message. But if the other person is right now getting the message, yeah, if you're making up this phone number, someone's going to get it. <laughs> So uh, I think maybe a lot of us might be might be getting stuck here, and yeah, I don't have much to help on this. If it doesn't let you go through, it doesn't let you go through. It, it's it, it used to be a lot easier to to do this in these classes because again, before so much fraud and fake accounts and all of that, it was a lot easier. But since they're trying to protect themselves, then it's very inconvenient for us in a class. But uh, let's try to do the best that we can. I thought I saw another hand over here somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Um, as far as the. Uh privacy issue. Um, I have a friend who, you know, he makes up his own, he makes up a name and he creates a, a life raft account that he doesn't use for anything other than, uh, you know, going to that account when you have disasters, right? So he's got, there's nothing in that account name that relates to him or any of his photos or any of his other personal contact information other than that's his life raft where he goes to find a password to, um, uh, regenerate new passwords for uh, hacked accounts. Is it? I haven't heard of that. Is it? Is it this life raft? No, no. I'm just using words as a. Uh, oh, okay. You, know, you, you pick up another another Gmail account uh -huh. or, uh, or a Hotmail account and create a name, write it down, get the passwords, put some answers in, um, and then uh, when they say if you get locked out, then. Uh, that's a good point. Let me write it down. So it may be valuable to create an account only for the purposes of social media. Of, of, yeah, for only, for the, only for the purpose of, uh, of uh, re verifying, uh, <coughs> or creating a new password. Purposes of verification or identity. Yeah, identity and verification and creating a new password for any that is separate. Mm -hmm. Se separate. That is separate from your main account. So it may be valuable to go off and get another Gmail account, a Hotmail account, Yahoo, whatever. They're all free. It may be valuable to go off and create an account, obviously at another time than right now. But you can create this account that is only for the purposes of setting up social networks or setting up these free accounts or getting into coupon sites or whatever. Uh, a lot of people use their one email for everything and then it's so full of spam and it's so full of stuff and it's like I just want to connect with my friends and family but it's so full of junk. Well you can create these accounts that are uh, specifically set up for that. Yes? Pretty much, yeah. Just make it a basic. Put nonsense information. 
just a way for you to get back to it for the sole purpose of verifying these these things because a lot of them ask you to verify an email address well I don't want to give my personal email I already get enough junk mail so I could use one of these uh, you know life raft accounts one of these burner accounts one of these extra accounts just to verify this stuff and then, and then the Yes. Okay. That was going to be my question, was to confirm. Because basically, you're going to list in your setup this new account as your security account. So yeah. Information. Exactly. You're you're creating this account that is sort of a buffer between you and your real information, uh, and you're using that account uh, for verifying all of this stuff. So, like, with this lady, when she got locked out. Have another account that they would send that information so yeah. she could log in into the verification that's, that's right. Mm -hmm. Just a moment, yes. So if I create a fake account, I still need to give my real phone number. It, that's, this is the catch-22, yeah. Now we're seeing more of these accounts that I want to create these accounts, and then I have to still yeah. do a phone number, maybe. Did you get a Google phone number? Uh, there, there might be ways to get other phone numbers as well. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole ball of wax. Let me write that down as well. Uh, question there. Yes. Uh, why did I, I have to uh, Google verification codes? Two codes. On my phone, I got two of them. One is for. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, both. Is the second one. Uh, if you got maybe our reception is pretty bad in here and the first one didn't come in time so then you got a second one so use the second one because it's the newest one you must still be asked to supply a phone number so you may look into getting a Google Voice phone number a Google Voice phone number you can get these over at voice.google.com oh look at that Google is giving away phone numbers so voice.google.com free to set up to get a new phone number that is linked to an existing phone number now the point of this is I can go over to uh, voice.google.com and create the account and they give me a brand new phone number but it still has to be tied with an existing phone number. They're not going to be giving phone numbers just free, completely willy-nilly. You do have to have a real phone number first. So the idea is someone calls that brand new Google Voice number, and, it, and then that phone call gets forwarded to the phone number or phone numbers that you choose. Various ways that it can be used is someone calls that phone number, and it rings my phone at home and the phone at the office and my cell phone so then I answer it on one of them and then I talk to the person another way to use it is simply for the voicemail box maybe I have it set up that when they call that Google number it doesn't actually go uh, forwarded to any real phone number it goes directly to a voicemail perhaps for my customers and such and I, and I say welcome to Victor's Bakery we'll get back to you as soon as possible please leave a message so you can get a free phone number over from Google, but they're again giving all of this information to, to another big company. And this is the double-edged sword of modern marketing, modern social media, modern internet usage, that we give a lot of information to these companies. And uh, we see many times when they might not have our best interests, because a company's purpose is to make money and to please its shareholders and all of that. And we are part of that goal of them so sometimes as a consumer we we don't get the best side of things and the whole point of this is well in the old days what I said last week all of this social media stuff is is marketing the new generation of marketing last week I said that in the old days I put an ad in the newspaper I put an ad on TV I put a a billboard on the on the street and so putting that information I'm a you know, I'm a, I'm a plumber, I'm going to put my information in the phone book, everyone's going to see it. Every real customer or crazy person's going to see it. I put myself on TV, I put, you know, I record a video, uh, I do a commercial and I put myself on TV. I want customers, well everyone's going to see me, that's the guy that owns the business, I could be a target for kidnapping, you know, for the extreme case. 
So even in the real world, there's always the downsides for doing any sort of marketing. But of course, in the real world, it's valuable to do marketing because no one's going to come to your business if they don't know you exist. In the digital world, it's the same thing. No one knows you exist, so you have to market. Marketing is social media. There's the double-edged sword of social media, like the double-edged sword of marketing in the real world. In the real world, okay, I don't want to get kidnapped, so I'm not going to put my face on TV. Well, then I miss uh, reaching a possible audience, and the odds of me getting kidnapped is so small, so it might not even be a, a problem. So this is taking a little while, but hopefully uh, you are able to create this account or not. If you're not able to create it, again, I, I don't have much to, to tell you. Maybe you can just follow along and uh, take notes, and then at home try to set it up. Let me see if this is going to let me right here. So mine is saying, you're almost done. Verify your email at this email. Well, I made that email up completely. It's fake. Um, can't find the email resend. Visit the help center. Change your email. Sometimes it might work to simply ignore that and go back to business.google.com. So is that going to let me sign in? No, oh, it's still saying verify my email. Change my email. Cancel that. All right, what if I go over to plus.google.com? Sign in. So in my case, it's not it's not letting me uh, go past this part. I, it wants me to verify an email. I made up the email. I won't be able to verify it. So I'm experiencing it as well. So don't feel bad if it's not quite working for you. It is, as I said, I've taught this class for several years. And every semester, it, it gets worse to teach it in the sense that these networks are trying to be so secure that it makes it difficult then for you to create these accounts and such. So what we're going to do is. Uh, we're going to take our first break. Usually we take a little break every hour or so. We're going to take our first break. We're going to see if you're able to set this up or not. And you can call me over. I'll help you out. But if it's not quite working, again, I, there's not much I'm going to be able to do. I don't work for Google. I can't press a button to make it work for you. Uh, so if you're able to create the account and to log in and such, great. We'll do the lecture in 10 minutes. If not, you'll just have to kind of follow along, replay the video when you're at home, when you can log in. Maybe think about logging in with real credentials. Again, all of this can be deleted, but that's, that's how these networks are. When we get to Facebook, when we get to Instagram, they all have these road bumps, and we'll see how far we go. It's 10.36. We'll be back at 10.46.